we haven't fully grasped the importance of things being not only just announced to us through preaching, but teaching has an ability to pronounce what was announced, to bring a level of explanation to us so it just won't be hanging off in the nebulous, you know what I'm saying, without any practicality. So that's, that's where I'm at, you know what I mean? So you may hear me, and if you follow behind me, and you've been going to YouTubes, and uh, you not YouTube, but YouTube, and the videos that we have there, you, you'll find out, if you've been following, that I've been readjusting, because I'm really leaning into the Lord so that I not only have something to say, but so that I could say it the way he would have me to say it. Sure. So that it would have a long-term effect on us. So you may hear me take a scripture and use it maybe twice or three times because I'm trying to get us to understand how important a message like this could be. Amen. It's my personal lifeline. This is where I live from. Uh, it was a time that I, 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 I put all my eggs in the basket and I believed in deliverance. And I believed in uh, prophecy. I know I'm not alone. I, 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 I followed the cloud by day and the fire by night. The spectacular. I went from meeting to meeting. And I was in certain circles where everybody said, if you come over here, things happen. I followed that. That was all I knew at the time. You know, I thought of the child, I spoke of the child. And I understood, but when you get older, some things you have to put away. Or, I'm not saying we don't do it. Deliverance is important because we have some among us who haven't experienced deliverance. But then there are some of us who have held ourselves accountable enough to what we're hearing that it don't have to be that cataclysmic, dramatic display of someone's sure, power. Sure, sure. Right. You can actually get it in the secret place, which I hope that would be our objective, is to go into the secret place. You know, turn off all of the voices and get along with God. And then I'll speak to you. As hard as it may be, your life depends on it. Yeah, it does. The, the quality of your life depends on that. That's a wisdom moment. So I just wanted to get that disclaimer, just to let you know. So if you write those down and say, hold on, you mentioned that before. I may have mentioned it, but I haven't mentioned it to this degree. Because it's like I want to kind of break the grid, and I'm trying to refine the word so that you can assimilate it into your life. Sure. Amen? That's more important to me than anything else. Is you get what I'm saying. Amen. And not just getting for sake of knowledge, but getting it to the point where it really hounds you. It will. <laughs> I know it will. I want it to chase you. I want it to be as uh, the book of Proverbs said in the chapter 6, right? When you lay down, it talks to you. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. When you go in a way, it preserves you. Right? When you get up, it, what it, what it does? It leads you. So, it leads you, it preserves you, and it communicates with you. So, that's, I want it to be that way. That's the way it should be. In fact, we try to make the word talk, Torah, I'm going to say Torah. Torah, the word means, if you look it up, it's not just commandments and statutes. <laughs> It says specifically in brackets, thank God that somebody got it right in the transliteration, a prophetic body of teaching. That's what it says for Torah. So when I look in Genesis to Malachi, it's a prophetic body of teaching. And that prophetic body has to ultimately be Christology. Right? Yeah. Theology hasn't changed us. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Uh, study hasn't changed us. Oh, I see. You haven't changed you. Is that better? <laughs> uh, I put the onus on everybody. It hasn't changed us. It hasn't brought us to a certain level of maturity. That's why it's important for me to reiterate these thoughts. And uh, salvation is the canopy, 
you know, redemption, which is a part of salvation, is the canopy of our transformation. But how the, the inner workings and the dynamics of transformation is underneath the subheading of regeneration. That's why we spend time talking about regeneration, because it's very important, right? Sure. Okay. Let me just reiterate, I got one page I want to bring some notes out of, and then we'll get into some new things as much as we can. We said that regeneration or is what? It's a conscience awakening of the reality of the new covenant. So we need to be consciously awakened to the realities that are in the new covenant. Alright? Need to be who? Awakened. You can hear it and not be awakened. You can be exposed to it and not be awakened. You can come to a building and not be awakened. You can be just like Jacob. The latter was in his place. Amen. I mean, he was in Luz. <clears throat> that word, love, you, ever remember, you ever heard about that in Genesis 28? When the latter went up and down, the angels ascending and descending. You notice how the angels go up, not come down. But then he landed in a place, said he lighted upon a place, put his head on the rock, which is all prophetic. And that word Luz is actually almond. And if you know anything about prophetic, almond speaks to the first word, the first root word. So he was in a place where there was something new outside of the scope he'd been exposed to that Abraham didn't have the experience. Right? So he had no point of reference. You get what I'm saying? And, uh, but he missed it. He was asleep. And we don't need to be asleep. We need to be awakened. Somebody told me last week that they were you know, asleep. And you, you can be in an atmosphere like this and be asleep and not know it. And so it has to take an encounter. Uh, an encounter. That's why I told you once you awaken, you never can go back to doing what you used to do. Sure. Trust me. You can get the devils cast out. You get prophetic words. You can stay up all night. You can fast 40 days. I guarantee you won't bring you to an awakening. <laughs> It's a, it's a part of the Spirit of God. Yeah. Amen. Those are religious uh, activities that we try to appease our, 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 our spiritual selves. And that's what they told us. If we walk in that way, we'll be fruitful. But, it, I mean, come on. How many times are we going to have revivals? It had, had, am I right? We, I mean, we have centuries of revivals. And some of us got a backlog, a catalog of prophetic words. And yet, they still are in osmosis. But it has to happen. And regeneration is the, to me, is the grandfather clause to getting you to a point to experience all of the instructions that is coming out from the pulpit that are foundational principles for this house, right? And without it, without regeneration, as I said, heaven itself will remain closed. You can't access it. This is what I wrote. Without regeneration, heaven remains close to our human understanding and life. When our understanding is open, there's a tangible witness of heaven, heavenly realities. When the heavens are open, which I told you, Apostle Tim told us, open heaven is the open who? Mind. Powerful. I mean, that was one thought. Feed the seed, and, feed the seed and nurture the nature. And uh, take the lie out of religion and you change the region. Those are some of the things that I remember about that that still resonate in my spirit. That's the challenge. Sure. Right? When the heavens are open, when our understanding is open, when regeneration is a part of who we are, if it's flowing in our DNA, there's a tangible witness of heavenly realities. Also, an accurate assessment of spiritual things. So, through this teaching, as we move deeper, I'm going to give you an accurate assessment. Of spiritual things. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you. I need that every now and then because I have to make sure I'm in the right church. And an ongoing awareness as well of the presence of the Spirit's role in your life. That's why when I get done with this teaching, I'm going right into the emancipator of the kingdom, which is the Holy Spirit. I taught it online. But I encapsulated the notes from that, and, and I got some other things I need to add. And I'm probably going to spend the rest of this year. I'm going to tell you right now. We're not even going to entertain the kingdom. I'm going to just tell you right off the top. 
Because if you don't get to know Him, you're going to be in trouble. Amen. You can get to know Steve. You like to, have to talk to me on telephone. You want to be in our groups. That's fine. But he's got, he is the most important entity in the church. I don't care what my scholastic acumen is without his interpretation. It's futile. Amen. 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 It's a dead word. It won't produce. It won't. Won't nothing to happen to you. Amen. <laughs> so, in order to know these things, it becomes necessary to be raised up in the heavenly experience and walk out the principles that are set forth in the new covenant. So, regeneration is a not. A, 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 it's not an Old Testament uh, word. It's a New Testament word. That's why you only got it twice in scriptures. But it's cloaked. Amen. Paul spent a lot of time. In, in certain places, especially specifically Romans 6, allowing us to have insight on what happens with, when re regeneration is actually a part of who we are. Amen? Remember I spent time talking about Scripture in 1 Corinthians 15? Remember that? 45, we talked about the distinction between the living soul and the quickening spirit, which is necessary. We have to transition from that, that earthly model to the heavenly model. And that the only way you can do that is through regeneration. You can join the church. You can have a church affiliation. You can have a sinner's prayer. That, don't, that does not necessitate, or I should I say, that does not verify that you are being regenerated. Amen? Most of us think it's a password. A sinner's prayer is a password. Am I right? You just say the prayer. How many times do you hear me lead people through the sinner's prayer? Very few times, right? Why is that? 